dear friends. Dietrich Bonhoeffer once wrote that there is meaning in every journey that is unknown to the traveler. He discovered this profound truth in many pivotal moments of his life. In 1930, for example, he went to America to study. But he learned more, much more, from the Afro-American <coughs> spirituals in Harlem, which is uh, uh, like Dufton to Melbourne. Uh, then whatever was offered at the predominantly <coughs> white middle-class Protestant seminary in New York City. When we learn what we are not looking for, that kind of education can be quite life-changing. Anthony of Padua, my favorite saint, your namesake, wanted to emulate the brothers who were killed by the Saracens. He set sail for Morocco, but ended up in Italy instead. And there he learned to be a different kind of missionary, not one who invited a certain death or martyrdom by disparaging the religion of others, but by treating them with uh, a deep respect. In the end, Anthony did manage to go to the land of the Saracens, albeit long after his death. Along with Francis of Assisi, Anthony is one of the most revered saints in Islam. He is loved by Muslims as far afield as India and Pakistan. Anthony Swanay, years ago, you left your village uh, in southern Vietnam for the dazzle, the lights of the big city called Saigon, <laughs> or some of you called Ho Chi Minh City. You wanted to carve out a brighter future for yourself. You studied hard, worked hard, and dreamt big dreams. But then you met the Redemptorists, <laughs> and the course of your life was altered forever. You came to discover the meaning of the journey that was unknown to you. Like Bonhoeffer in Harlem or Anthony in Padua. The God who formed you in your mother's womb continues to reshape you into his likeness and his instrument. In a way, what you are about to undergo this evening is part of that reshaping of your soul, or shall we call the reconfiguration to Christ. The Aconet is not merely another formal step towards the ultimate dream of every seminarian. It should not be misconstrued merely as a rung on the ladder to an ecclesiastical class or career. That image of a kind of power ascendancy still popular in the imagination of many Catholics is in fact a travesty of Christian leadership and service. To enter the ordained ministry is not to, to commit oneself to a socially upward mobility. Quite the, the opposite is the case. It is a commitment to downward mobility, to things like availability, generosity, and ultimately what we call the kenosis of Christ, the total self-giving to others. So much of what is wrong with the church today stems from this travesty of Christian leadership and service. We see this not only in the sexual abuse crisis, but also in the distortion. The distortion of what it means to be a Christian leader and disciple. When privilege, 
power and dominance are more evident than love, humility, and servanthood in the church, then the very gospel of the servant Jesus is at stake. What we need to reclaim for the church today, forcefully and unequivocally, is the notion of the diaconia. To this end, it is not just the deacons, but priests, bishops, and all the baptized need to manifest the diaconia of Christ in who we are and in what we do. Until we have reclaimed the diaconia, the church will be less than what Christ intends it to be. The readings this evening speak of joy and hope and renewal. The prophet Joel consoles his people in the time of drought, famine, and pestilence that there will be a better future. The Lord will pour out his blessings on them and restore them to life again. Be not afraid, Joel reassures a very demoralized people after the exile and a very uncertain period after the exile. Those words echo the message of Jesus to his disciples as he commissions them for service in the kingdom. Go, make disciples of all nations and know that I am with you. Yes, always even to the end of time. Brother Anthony, your ordination this evening also brings joy, hope, and even renewal to us. The church in Australia and your redemptorist province are rejuvenated by your youthfulness, reinvigorated by your commitment, and enriched by your gifts. Even though we do not know when the better future for the church might be, especially here in Australia. We are comforted and strengthened by your companionship. The journey might be uncertain, but it will be less daunting when walked together, knowing that Christ Jesus is with us as he promised, even to the end of time. Just as we on account of your ordination, hear the echo of these words, be not afraid. You, Brother Anthony, you should feel those words reverberate in your heart. It is only with courage and trust that you can go and make disciples in this town and in this place. In the end though, what God asks of us is not whatever we human beings construe as success and achievement. We might never return to the days when the church knew of success, power and achievement in terms of things like numerous religious and priests, seminarians, magnificent cathedrals, great hospitals, grand universities and so on. If the experience of the pilgrim people in the Old Testament is any guide, it is the journey. It is the journey rather than the destination that shapes the soul. And the Exodus, often at its most assiduous, most trying, most soul searching, is paradoxically the most formative and life changing. Perhaps. Perhaps we are at this part of the journey as the people of God. And the meaning of it might be in the wise words of Bonhoeffer, what we are not looking for. Perhaps the meaning we ought to learn is that we must abandon whatever is contrary, whatever is obstructive to the gospel of love, compassion, and vulnerability. 
the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. These are the words that ring out throughout this ceremony. Let these very words, Brother Anthony, be your motto of life, especially as a deacon. Let it guide your ministry and form you as the minister of the gospel. May you not be afraid to make up, as in Paul says in the second reading, all that has still to be undergone by Christ for the sake of his body, the church, and in this way become the true servant of God's message. <laughs>